Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to troubleshoot and repair a non-working temperature gauge on a first generation Toyota Tacoma. This is a 2001 model equipped with the 3.4 liter V6 and a similar procedure may also apply to the third generation 4Runner. I will also have a giveaway and those details will be at the end of the video. This is a fairly common problem on these trucks. I did have mine fixed for a bit and then it started acting up again. Mine started out where the needle would only go up halfway right on startup even if the engine was cold. When the truck was running or the key was on it would stay in that position and never move. After replacing the sensor it was fine for a bit and then completely stopped working. The odd time the needle would jump up halfway. First is starting with the basics. On this model of engine the sensor for the gauge is located at the rear of the engine bay behind the air plenum. It can be hard to see as it's in an awkward spot. You can isolate the issue at the start to determine if it's a sensor or a wiring and gauge cluster. Disconnecting the sensor, just pull off the connection. I have made a jumper wire, as you can see here. Make sure it's long enough to connect to a sufficient ground source. One side has the insulator stripped back, and the other side has a spade connector. Plug the spade connector into the sensor's electrical connector. The key will need to be on in the truck to activate the cluster. Then, touch the wire on a ground source. The gauge should move all the way up to the top. The sensor acts as a variable source. Using a jumper wire just acts as a on or off switch. Try multiple ground sources. This can be the engine, firewall bolts, or even the negative battery terminal. If the gauge only moves part way or doesn't move at all, there could be an issue with the connector, wiring, or gauge. If it moves all the way, then there's an issue with the sensor. For testing the wire with the multimeter, keeping the connector disconnected from the sensor, it uses a spade connection and this may be hard to access with a probe, so I installed another spade connector and probed it from that side where it gets crimped. With the key in the on position again, probe the connection. The positive probe is on the wire for the sensor and the negative can be on the battery terminal. Battery voltage should be present here, if not there is an issue with the wiring or connector. The sensor can also be tested, this would be the same as testing the ECU temp sensor. Its resistance can be measured and the reading would depend on its temperature. You can put it in hot or cold water to see the fluctuation. I do have a video which goes into more in depth on the replacement but as a brief overview, after disconnecting the sensor you will need a 3 inch drive ratchet, a 3 inch extension, 6 inch extension and finally a 12 millimeter deep socket. There is a small cutout for the socket in the harness duct. Compare the old and new sensors to ensure they are the same then install the new sensor. Start it by hand so it's not cross-threaded, then tighten and plug in the connection. If it's a cluster issue, this is a bit more work, disassembling the dash and removing the gauge cluster. The issue at the cluster can either be a corroded connection or the nuts are loose on the connections on the rear of the temperature gauge. Again, I do have a full in-depth video on the cluster removal, so I won't be going in-depth here to save video time. However, as a rough overview, you'll need to remove the lower trim piece below the radio bezel, HVAC faceplate, center trim around the radio, knee panel below the steering column, steering column trim, ignition switch trim, trim around the gauge cluster, and finally the gauge cluster. Inspect the electrical connectors on the rear of the gauge cluster. One of mine did have mild corrosion. Here's a view of the back side for a reference. The cluster will have snap clips all the way around which needs to be disengaged to pull off the lens assembly. Use a standard screwdriver to push those connections down, then push it apart. Considering those clips are all the way around, they can snap back into place fairly easy. So to keep the assembly apart, I used little pieces of folded over cardboard to hold it open. They are intended to be stuck between the white and black plastic assemblies. Work your way around evenly, don't force it apart as you can break the clips. You can also use a standard screwdriver to lightly pry it open as it can stick together. Gently pry so you don't damage any plastic components. And finally the lens assembly can be removed. Here is a view of the inside for a reference. To remove the temperature gauge, it does need to come out for the repair. There are three Phillips screws on the rear. Once those Phillips screws are out, then you can remove the gauge assembly. This does take some patience. 
the tack face will need to be pulled out slightly to help out the temperature gauge. The temperature face needs to be pulled away from the alignment pins, then directed out of its location. On the back, there are four nuts. These do come loose over time and will eventually cause a broken connection. Mine were loose enough where I could spin them off by hand. I have heard of some situations where the nuts do completely fall off. Removing the nuts and washers to inspect the connections for any corrosion. You can also remove a circuit board, just make sure you don't mix up its orientation. Even take some photos with your phone as a reference during the disassembly. To remove any corrosion and to protect the connections, I applied Deoxid D100L from Keg Laboratories. If corrosion is present, let it sit for a period of time anywhere from an hour to the next day. Clean off any solution to remove any corrosion and then apply another coating as protection. Beyond cleaning and protecting, D100L also helps improve conductivity on the connection. A link to this product will be included in the video description. When done, reinstall the circuit board in the correct orientation. Install the washers with the nuts and tighten. Don't over tighten the connections as you can damage the connections on the circuit board. Put the gauge back into place, then install and tighten those three Phillips screws on the rear. The same issue also applies to the fuel gauge and mine were in fact loose, however my fuel gauge was still functioning fine. The removal is the exact same. Remove the three Phillips screws on the rear, bend out the edge of the speedometer face, then pull out the fuel gauge. Again, remove the nuts and washers, inspect for any corrosion. Clean any corrosion as needed, then apply Deoxid D100L. Applying this protectant is a great preventative maintenance measure, so it does reduce the chance of having any corrosion issues in the future. This is especially important for those who off-road their vehicles, where you have a greater chance of exposing your truck to more moisture. Reassemble the gauge, again tighten those terminal nuts. Pull the speedo face out then install the fuel gauge. Install and tighten those three Phillips screws in the rear. I did clean the inside of the lens as it can attract dust. Then install the lens assembly, make sure all the clips are aligned and it's pushed back into place evenly. Then snap the assembly together. After that is installing the gauge cluster back into the truck. Again I did apply Deoxid D100L to remove what little corrosion I had along with protecting the connections and improving the connection conductivity. Only a light amount of solution is needed here. The supplied small brush and a lid does make the application extremely easy. Reconnect all the connections, then screw the cluster back into place. A test can be done before assembling everything else. Reconnect the battery and start the truck. Once you have verified everything is working correctly, reassemble the rest of the dash and reverse of removal. As for the giveaway, one winner will be picked one week from today and will receive Deoxit's Gold Kit. In order to enter, you must follow the link in the video description for various ways to enter. Due to the shipping policies, you must be located in the US. Full contest rules will be in the link. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me, and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.